While there may be no direct evidence for the truthfulness of the Atlantis myth anywhere in the Atlantic Ocean, there certainly is plenty of evidence proving that a large continent once existed in the western part of the Pacific Ocean, abreast of China and Australia. From 1624 to 1634, the Dutch built a fortress in Taiwan, which they named Fort Zeelandia. Taiwan became one of East Asia's most important transit sites and Fort Zeelandia an international business center. The name Zeelandia derived from the province of Zeeland in the Netherlands, but it actually meant sea land or country in the sea, and it referred to a huge landmass alleged to be rich in gold and silver and believed to be located somewhere east of Taiwan. In 1642, the Dutch explorer Abel Tasman started searching the Pacific for Zealandia. He set sail from Japan and headed southeast. His return trip ended in Indonesia after discovering several major islands, including Tasmania and an archipelago he called Staten Land. In 1645, Dutch cartographers renamed the archipelago New Zealandia, and British explorer James Cook shortened it to New Zealand in 1771. The name Zealandia survives today as Zealandia Bank, the peak of a submarine volcano in the northern Mariana Islands, and Zealandia Fern, a plant native to New Zealand and New Caledonia. The Zealandia myth was not a figment of Dutch imagination. The continent of Zealandia had been common knowledge among Chinese historians for thousands of years. Shu Fu was a Chinese alchemist born in 255 BCE who served as a court sorcerer and was sent by the emperor to the Pacific Ocean to retrieve the elixir of life from the immortals in a faraway land named Danzo. He returned empty-handed and was sent on a second expedition, but was never to be seen again. In 499 CE, the Chinese Buddhist missionary Hui Shan stated that this mysterious remote country lay almost 10,000 kilometers east of Xi'an, China. He believed the enlightened Lord Akshobhya dwelled in that blissful, pure land in the ocean. Hui Shan reached his destination and upon his return reported that the locals made textiles and paper from the bark of mulberry trees. Bark cloth is traditionally made using characteristic stone or wooden beaters, which are among the most common artifacts found in archaeological sites throughout the Pacific. The land was named Fusang, which translates to the country of paper mulberry trees, and the term would later designate Japan in Chinese poetry. However, the 7th century Book of Liang differentiates Fusang from Japan, pointing out the former was much further out into the ocean, where Polynesia is located today. In light of the latest oceanographic data, we can identify two major submerged landmasses in the West Pacific. One lying east of Australia, and the other between Japan and New Guinea. These two land masses were linked by a vast land bridge in the region where Melanesia sits today. In 1926, the English author James Churchward surmised the existence of a sunken continent in the Pacific Ocean. He dubbed it the Lost Continent of Mu. There is a claim that Mu is a corruption of the name Maui, who was a folk hero and trickster throughout the Pacific, and a stock character in the mythology of Polynesia, Micronesia, and Melanesia. 
The American geophysicist Bruce Lindike revived the name Zealandia in 1995. The New Zealand geologists Nick Mortimer and Hamish Campbell confirmed in 2014 that about 25 million years ago, a shift in plate tectonic movements began to contort and crumple the region. This is now most evident in the Southern Alps of New Zealand, formed by compression of the crust. Elsewhere, the plate boundary involved the subduction of one plate under the other, producing several oceanic trenches along the edges of Zealandia, and the eventual sinking of the continent. The Tonga Trench, about 2,000 kilometers northeast of New Zealand. Is the second deepest on Earth, at about 10,880 meters below sea level, with the fastest subduction rate in the world, about 24 centimeters a year. In 2017, a team of 11 geologists concluded that Zealandia fulfills all the requirements to be considered the drowned continent described in ancient Chinese texts. The Philippines is an archipelago composed of about 7,640 islands, situated on the western fringe of the Pacific Ring of Fire. It experiences frequent seismic and volcanic activity. The Galathea depth is the third deepest point on Earth, at about 10,550 meters below sea level. Just 200 kilometers east off the coast of Samar Island. In fact, the Philippine Plate lies beneath the Philippine Sea. To the south, it meets Papua, approximately at the Karstens Pyramid, while its northernmost tip is Mount Fuji in Japan. The Philippine Plate borders with the Ryukyu Islands to the northwest. And the Mariana Islands to the east, where the Challenger Deep is located at a record depth of 11,000 meters below sea level. The way the northwestern part of Zealandia submerged into the ocean is particularly evident if we analyze the geology of Taiwan. The island is a tilted fault block. East of which a huge landmass sank in a relatively short period of geologic time. Taiwan is actually the westernmost edge of a large continent that ended up being swallowed by the ocean. The crescent-shaped west coast of the island slopes down to fertile plains and sandy beaches, while the eastern seaboard boasts sheer sea cliffs. The most famous of which are located in Hualien and Ilan counties. Yonaguni Island lies just about 100 kilometers east of Ilan County, and it is well known for its ancient matriarchal society and its arcane megalithic structures. The sea off Yonaguni is a popular diving location. And some singular seabed formations have been found, which resemble a submerged ceremonial complex with walls, steps, and terraces. The whole structure is about 150 meters long, 40 meters wide, and almost 30 meters tall. Taidong County has the largest prehistoric settlement ever discovered in Taiwan. Where monoliths, burial mounds, pottery, and various artifacts have been found, Okinawa boasts three archaeological sites culturally connected to prehistoric Taidong County and Yonaguni Island. The most ancient one is called Sefa Utaki. It is a megalithic shrine with towering boulders and a Stone Age altar. Another mysterious site consists of the half-submerged ruins of a fortress with towers and terraces, just southwest of Maida Cape. Last but not least, Katsuren Castle sits on a promontory and has several features reminiscent of Yonaguni's underwater monument. 
Around the village of Asuka in southern Honshu are unusual carved granite stones, the largest of which is known as Masuda's Stone Boat. Similar megalithic sites are found in the Mariana Islands, most notably the ruins of the House of Taga. In Micronesia there are several traces of prehistoric cities such as Nan Madal, Lalu, Thauba, Sapenfolk, and Likinlulam. Tioma is a major archaeological site in Vanuatu containing the oldest known cemetery within the Pacific Islands. The most famous monument in Samoa is the, the House of the Octopus, a huge stone circle and megalithic temple. Nearby is also the Pulamele Mound, a pyramid constructed of basalt stones. Arguably, Tonga's most important monument is a six meter tall trilithon. But on the island, there are also about 20 burial sites in the form of terraced platform mounds. New Zealand has some of the world's southernmost megalithic structures, such as the Keimanawa Wall and a few carved rocks around Lake Taupo and in Kangaroa Forest. So, Zealandia may no longer be an identifiable continent from a geological viewpoint, but it certainly forms a unified continent in terms of civilization. Its inhabitants were the first humans with vessels capable of crossing vast distances of water, which enabled them to colonize the Indo-Pacific in prehistoric times. They were named Lapita people by American archaeologists Edward Winslow Gifford and Richard Shelter Jr. after mishearing a local word which meant excavation while they were digging for relics in New Caledonia in 1952. The Lapita people are distributed all over the Pacific Islands specifically in Taiwan, Maritime Southeast Asia, coastal New Guinea, the islands of Melanesia and Polynesia, as well as in the Indian Ocean, especially Madagascar. The first to recognize a common language from Polynesia to Madagascar was the Dutch philologist Adrian Ralland in 1708. About 200 years later, the Austrian ethnologist Willem Schmidt coined the term Austronesian to refer to that language family. Most Austronesian languages lack a long history of written attestation. The earliest inscription was found in 1936 at Doyen Chao, Vietnam. This vernacular text shows that an Austronesian-speaking population was living in that region about 2,000 years ago. Aside from language, Lapitas also share common cultural characteristics like tattooing, stilt houses, jade carving, linglingo jewelry, and various rock art motifs. They also share wetland agriculture and a common set of domesticated plants and animals that were carried along with their migrations, including rice, bananas, coconuts, breadfruit, yams, taro, paper mulberry, chickens, pigs, and dogs. The word paddy, meaning rice, as in the phrase paddy field, is an Austronesian word. And so are the terms tattoo and taboo, which have come into mainstream parlance on a global level today. The Lapitas were expert seafarers or navigators and reached out as far as Africa and the Americas by means of canoes, catamarans and houseboats. Several Austronesian-speaking communities nicknamed Sea Gypsies maintain a nomadic sea-based culture, mainly in the Indonesian archipelago. 
Two traditional products have remained popular in most of the Pacific Islands to this day. Piper methysticum, commonly known as kava, is used to produce a drink with sedative properties. And pan is a preparation combining beetle leaf with areca nut, which is chewed for its stimulant effects. Another important element in Lapita culture is ritual dance accompanied by cries and grunts, such as the haka of New Zealand. Some aesthetic elements of ancient Lapita ritualism may have been incorporated into Japanese sumo wrestling, such as the hakayoi, the phrase shouted by the referee during the bout, the shikiri and shiko, which are the ceremonial acts at the beginning of a bout, and the yumitori shiki, that is, the bow twirling performance at the end of each tournament. The spiritual concept of mana is a foundation of the Lapita worldview. It refers to a metaphysical quality which bestows magnetism, power, and charisma. Lapita animism has a pantheon of five main gods. Wiro, or Hero, is the god of darkness, magic, and death. Tane, or Kane, is the god of light, peace, and life. Tu, or Ku, is the god of war, hunting, and survival. Rango, or Lono, is the god of farming and fertility. Tangaroa, or Kanaloa, is the creator god, who is represented as a fish-eyed man and is thought to shapeshift into a giant octopus or a dragon. He is associated with the Azure Dragon God, which symbolizes the East and the Spring Season in Chinese mythology. Lapita people traditionally believe their common ancestor was called Tiki. They still portray him in grotesque humanoid figures carved out of wood, similar to the totem poles of Cascadian cultures or the Chemamuls of Andean cultures. Genetic findings appear to confirm that the Lapita people descend from bands of hunters and fishermen who moved from the Chinese mainland to what is today's Taiwan when sea levels were about 140 meters lower than in the present day, and the floor of the Taiwan Strait was exposed as a broad land bridge. The earliest evidence of human habitation in Taiwan dates back 30,000 years. Bashian Cave in Taidong County is the oldest cave dwelling within the Pacific Islands. It may be the ancestral home of all Lapita peoples and the Urheimat of all Austronesian languages. From Taiwan, they spread northeast to southern Japan, as well as southward to the Philippines and eastward to the Mariana Islands. Their dispersal was driven by a rapid population growth and the gradual submersion of some of the islands they had settled. Over thousands of years, their expansion encompassed a huge area. And especially in the last few hundred years, Lapita people have intermingled culturally and genetically with other populations, namely the Chinese in Taiwan, the Negritos in the Philippines, the Papuans in Indonesia, the Africans in Madagascar, and the Europeans in New Zealand. In the early 4th century, the Chinese alchemist Ge Hong wrote the following passage, and I quote, When the scholar Wang Yuan and the immortal sorceress Magu were dining together, she claimed that in her extremely long life she had seen the eastern sea turn to mulberry fields three times. Wang Yuan nodded and remarked, 
All the sages say the Eastern Sea will turn into dry land again someday. My name is Luke Seferian. My main areas of research are anthropology and mythology. Please hit the like button and subscribe for future updates. Feel free to share my videos with fellow travelers and scholars.